what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I'm here with Joel Irway, the founder of the Webinar Agency, and I'm going to formally introduce Joel in a second. Joel, I always like to mention other podcast episodes people should check out, okay? And so I had one with Ian Garlic, who we both know, um, and he has a company video case story. He talked about his dad opened a restaurant and they had live dolphins inside the restaurant. So it kind of gets the creative juices flowing of how do you market your business? I had um, Todd Tasky on who talks about how do you sell your agency? So that's what he does. He kind of takes private equity with agencies and helps sell. And he has the second bite podcast. So sometimes the people make more on their second bite than they make on their first bite. And uh, I did an episode with Jason Swank as well. He talked about how he uh, kind of ran and built up an eight-figure agency and then sold it. So check those out and many, many more. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we all businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships. And how do we do that? We help you run your podcast. You know, we are an easy button for a business to launch or run a podcast. Uh, Joel, you know, for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. I found no better way to do that over the past decade than to profile the people and the companies I most admire and have them on my show. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. Joel has two podcasts, which we'll talk about. Um, Go to rise25.com or email us support at rise25.com. And if you haven't heard of Joel Irway, um, he is the founder of the webinar agency. He helps build high converting sales presentations and webinars for their clients. He's worked with people like Russell Brunson of ClickFunnels and many, many more. He's author the book of High Ticket Courses uh, to show experts how to create leveraged offers so they can scale their business with programs valued at $2,000 or more. And between his own personal sales and his clients, he's helped generate over $100 million uh, over the past few years alone. Um, And I mentioned he's a host of two podcasts, Sold with Webinars, check it out, and Experts Unleashed. Joel, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, pleasure to be here, man. Thanks for having me. So tell me about the webinar agency uh, and what you do. We work with primarily uh, thought leaders, coaches, and consultants, service providers. We help them design offers to, you know, generate, uh, design high ticket offers, and we help them generate leads and sales for it. So that is what we do in a nutshell. Uh, Primarily, we use some form of sales presentation as our mechanism, whether that's a long form traditional webinar that most people are used to, could be a short five to 10 minute mini webinar, or it could be something that we're, uh, that we've recently launched called an infocast, which is very similar to a podcast, but it is specifically designed to, uh, uh, to generate leads and sales. So that's what we do. I love it. And, you know, you are really a thought leader in the webinar space. When people have questions about webinars, I know many people consume your stuff and go to you. Um, And, you know, so people can go and, you know, you talk about a mini webinar also. Um, Tell people a little bit about the, the format people should think about when they're creating a presentation or webinar. And I just want to point out, Joel gives out so much information for free, like on his podcast, in his book, like I just mentioned, and online. So you can go to his website as well. Um, And there's two different websites I think they can check out. They can check out joelerway.com. And they could also check out the uh, the webinaragency.com too, right? Yeah. Yep. Those are two, two great spots to start. So talk about, you know, the, the concept of the mini webinar. Well, so, you know, in in order to understand what the concept of the mini webinar is, uh, you have to really uh, take a step back and um, and understand that, uh, you know, I don't know if you're uh, if you're like me, uh, I overanalyze everything. You know, I'm an engineer uh, by trade. And so I go into geek mode and um, and it's uh, it's it's a gift and a curse. It's a gift because I usually, you know, once I find something that works, I understand it 
intimately well and at a really deep, uh, deep knowledge, deep level. But the curse is it usually takes me a long time to actually like take action because I have to overanalyze everything, right? <laughs> so the good news is, is that when we, you know, launch something new, like when we went from, when we initially went from you know, just doing traditional, you know, hour to two hour long webinars, then we discovered mini webinars and now we're doing infocasts. Like this isn't just like a flash in the pan type thing. Like, oh, this is something new, like shiny object, shiny object, shiny object. Like going from webinars to mini webinars took like three years. Going from mini webinars now to understanding what infocasts can do, that was like another five years. So, uh, you know, in order to understand where to apply each of these mechanisms, like you have to understand one core thing. And the one core thing that, you know, uh, that, that you have to understand is the type of lead that you're attracting. You could have either marketing qualified leads or you can have sales qualified leads. So what are marketing and sales qualified leads? Well, uh, simply put, a marketing qualified lead is somebody who is um, just generally interested in your topic that you are talking about, in your market. Like they've just identified themselves. They've self-identified themselves as, yep, I'm in your target market. That's it. There's no urgency involved for them to actually have a problem solved. There is no problem that they're even aware of right now. They're just interested in your content. And so, you know, you look at top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, they would be at the top of funnel. So that's the larger pool of leads, like the, you know, um, uh, the largest pool of leads is your marketing qualified leads. And there's nothing wrong with trying to acquire marketing qualified leads. And in fact, once you get to a certain stage in business, like you want to generate marketing qualified leads and, and feed your sales team. Well, then you've got sales qualified leads. So a sales qualified lead is somebody who has not only raised their hand and said, yes, I'm in your market, but they've also raised their hand and said, I like your process and I've got a problem that I need solved now. Okay. So it's going to be a, a much smaller segment than your marketing qualified leads. But the one, number one thing that has identified them as an SQL is they've got urgency involved. I'm ready to make a decision like in the immediate future, okay? And so in order for me to like, this took me a long time to really understand that. So if we go back to the beginning of when I launched the webinar agency, all we did were the hour to two hour long webinars. Now, Jeremy, you know, you know I don't know if you, under, if you know what, you know, the answer is to this question, but if I were to ask you, you know, um, what is a, a, a long form webinar? Do you think that's to generate marketing qualified leads or do you think it's to generate sales qualified leads? I would, I would guess sales qualified leads. That's, well, that's actually, um, it's actually marketing. So like it, it does both, right? So like long form webinars are like the holy grail of like marketing. And this is, you know, in my opinion, this is a lot of my clients, like they, they like webinars because they, you know, when done correctly, they can educate somebody and then they can make an offer at the end, but they're incredibly difficult to get right. There's a lot of moving pieces, but they are actually a marketing qualified lead tool, meaning you will promote a webinar and say, hey, I want to give you a free training to learn how to X, Y, and Z, right? Free training. Hey, learn more. And at the end of it, a small segment are going to be like, okay, cool. Like this makes sense. Let's talk. But the vast majority of the people are still in information gathering mode. And this was a big misconception that I didn't understand back in the day. And so, um, you know, when you go after marketing qualified leads, what number one thing that you have to have on your side is time. Meaning like you need to have time to nurture those people because the vast majority of those leads are not going to be ready to buy right now. So then I started to think, okay, well, if, you know, if I want to accelerate the sales process, right, how do I do that? And this all came from the struggle that I had with my own personal webinar. So as the webinar agency, like I had to, you know, eat my own dog food, right? So I ran my own webinars to get clients, et cetera, et cetera. And it was the cobbler. It was the, the cobbler that didn't have any shoes. So like I had the worst converting webinar of all my clients and I'm, you know, I'm hiring consultants. I'm hiring people to pay, you know, to, to review my webinar, hiring agencies, to run ads, like the whole nine yards. I, I spent probably 50 to $75,000 trying to get my webinar to work. Now it was profitable, but like just barely, like I had to pay my sales team. I had to pay, you know, fulfillment costs. I had to pay for ads and all the coaching and consulting. And it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't scalable. It wasn't at the point where I, I knew we could just, you know, spend a dollar, make three, four or five back. So um, after about a year and a half of like beat my head against the wall, trying to get this thing to work, I said, you know what I'm going to do? 
Um, well, actually, read, I, I, I read this book. It was called How to Create an Irresistible Offer by Bob Bly. And um, Bob's a super I've had smart Bob guy. Bob on the podcast, yeah. Super smart guy. Uh, love Bob because he gave me the single greatest, the single biggest aha moment in my entire, you know, entrepreneurial career on page two or three of that book. There's a chart, you know, I love Bob to death. I love his work, but man, he speaks at like a grade 12 level. I need to comprehend at like a grade one level. So I almost skipped over this chart, but this chart explained, um, the difference in cost for like, it, it explained how cost per acquisition works as it relates to the type of content you produce. Okay. So this chart said uh, performance degradation as brand content increases and offer content. This is more like college level, not grade yes. 12. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so in a nutshell, he was saying, if you publish a piece of content that is primarily brand driven and doesn't have an offer in it or doesn't have a call to action, your cost per acquisition is going to be the highest. If you publish a piece of content that is primarily offer driven, your cost per acquisition will be the lowest. There was some other stuff. He kind of went in a grading scale, but that was the gist of the message. I'm like, oh my God. He's like, basically saying, make an offer is what he exactly, said. Exactly. Exactly. He's, you know, so like to summarize it, you nailed it, Jeremy. He's like, you, you know, if you want to, you know, do less marketing, make more offers. If you want more clients, do less marketing, make more offers. And I think, you know, um, we get in this cycle of like just wanting to, you know, educate, like as educators, what a lot of us are, right? Especially if you're a podcaster, you're a content creator, we're educators, but, you know, we want to give, 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 give. We like to teach, we like to inspire, we like to tell stories. But, you know, at some point, you got to make an offer. And so I read that. It was a, I, 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 clear as day, Jeremy. I remember this clear as day. I was laying in bed, awake, staring at the ceiling fan with the book right there. It was like page three. It was 11 o'clock at night. As soon as I read that, I said, I got it. I, I get it now. I slammed the book shut, jumped out of my bed, ran downstairs, fired open the laptop, and I created what is now called, you know, the, I didn't know this at the time, but it was the first version of what I call a power offer. And I said, I'm going to publish this to my social media feed. Not going to look at it until tomorrow morning and we'll see what happens. Go to sleep. I wake up the next morning. I had like 30 or 40 people raising their hand saying, hey, let's talk. That offer list was awesome. Let's talk. And by the end of, you know, within 48 hours, I had closed two $25,000 clients. One had paid in full. The other was on the wait list. And um, the rest is history. So I know there's a long drawn out answer of what's a webinar, mini webinar infocast, but like, the premise, like, I can't just give you the tools without understanding where they apply to. And if you don't understand what a marketing qualified lead and a sales qualified lead is, which is urgency, then none of that other stuff matters. So um, that makes perfect sense. I mean, if you yeah. go through uh, the webinar is designed to attract a mark, you know, someone's interested in the marketing piece. And then they, by the end, you want to convert them from marketing qualified lead into a sales qualified lead. But if you just make the offer you know, according to what you said with Bob Bly, like if there's not an offer in there, like here's how to create a webinar, there's no offer. It's a marketing qualified lead. So yeah. once you make an offer, it's now a sales qualified lead. Can you give an example of a power offer, your yep. power offer? Yep. So uh, I would say that, you know, not all offers are created equal. Like offers, like you can have a free offer, like, you know, registering for a webinar, that's an offer, right? It's, you know, hey, give me your name and email. I'll send you to this free training, right? But we want to make an offer that's specific to work with us, right? So that that first power offer that uh, uh, that I that I mentioned earlier, I'll give you that as an example because that's the one that kind of like lit my world on fire and um, and and allowed me to never go hungry for leads ever again. That one was targeting course creators, and we were offering our webinar writing services for them. So I said, you know what? Bob says, you know, do less marketing, make more offers. Here we go. This is what I'm going to say. So I published this, this script on my social media feed. And if you're listening right now, you can, you know, you can, um, you know, model it, do whatever you want. I mean, we have our own little mini offer for the power offer. Uh, and we can go to power up power offer workshop.com and you can learn how to write this, but I'll give you the script right now. Like this is, this is what you will learn inside the course. And you can get some ex additional examples there. That first one that I wrote was attention course creators. If I offered to write you a 
uh, write you a uh, uh, write you a webinar guaranteed to convert um, in 24 hours or less uh, without you needing to worry about what to say or how to say it. So you can enroll, you know, more clients and uh, more clients and more customers and clients now. Like, would you take them up on that offer? That was it. Like that was the like that was the power offer. Um, I had a couple more lines of copy down below, but um, that was it. And uh, that was how I landed two twenty-five thousand dollars clients for our agency in um, forty-eight hours. So it's if I, you know, attention primary avatar. If I offer to get you some sort of result without ABC hurdles that you know they're facing, would you take me up on that offer? That is the power offer. That's the power question. It's all about getting them to think about a question, like getting them to start to engage with that with that, um, you know, you know, with that idea. And if it's compelling enough, like you will get hand raisers. I can't tell you how like, we've had thousands of people take that power offer workshop training and they've generated millions and millions and millions of dollars collectively just using that, just by putting the power offer out there. Like it's, it's wild. Like that's probably the single like biggest needle mover that we've had in the you know, in terms of influence and impact in the industry. So I'm very proud of that. It's, it's, um, you know, we're, we're, I'm very proud of, of, of being able to give that to the, to people the can check it out at poweroffworkshop.com. Is that yep. a good place? Okay, cool. So yep. check that out for sure. And then I'm wondering, you know, what stage are people ideal to come to you? Joel, so when we're talking about, they go to the webinar agency, you mentioned course creators, which makes sense because They've already kind of figured out they have something to sell. You, you know, I, I would think that someone who's just starting out is not a great fit. Maybe they're better for your courses, but from the agency side, you want someone who's kind of further down, further down the path. So I can see how that's a fit. Listen, I have this course. I put my blood, sweat, and tears in it, and I want to sell more of this course. What's an ideal fit for you to come for, for the webinar agency piece? Where, they, where should they be at in their business? Great question. It's less on qualifications of like where they're at in their business and more so qualification of their commitment level to themselves. Meaning like if they've made the decision that yes, I'm going to be a full-time entrepreneur. Like I know this is what I want to do. Like it's, it's do or die. We can work with them because we do work with a lot of, um, you know, you can call them startup stage, you can call them early stage, but like, you know, they've just got an idea and they need help turning that idea into something that's compelling that can actually go get clients, right? So like our prime, like, you know, yes, we do webinars and mini webinars and infocasts. That's like the mechanism of what we do. But what we really do is we design offers, like, because it no, doesn't matter what mechanism we, uh, we put in place. If it's got a horrible offer, horrible messaging, mm -hmm. it's not going to convert. And so I would say it's more so like if, if you made the full commitment to, be a full-time entrepreneur and, and, and really take this seriously. Um, and you like what we say, like you like my methodologies, you like the idea of the power offer, you like the idea of like a, a 10 minute mini webinar. Um, then yeah, let's, let's chat. I mean, like we have, we have different levels for, uh, uh, different levels of service for all, all sorts of different types of people. But the first stage that we do with anyone is we create an offer for them. Like before we even get them into, you know, ongoing services, it's like, okay, first step, let's get an offer and let's get it to convert. So, you know, Joel, you, I've heard you say some of your most successful clients are open, open to changing their offer and pivoting their offer. Right. So, um, cause some people are attached to an offer possibly. Yes. So yes. can you talk about pivoting the offer and, and I don't know if you can think of an example of someone who doesn't hold too tightly because really the market speaks, right? Um, yep. If the market is not liking the offer, the market doesn't like the offer. You don't want it. So talk about pivoting the offer. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was working with a client. Uh, his name is Russell Lundstrom. Love him to death. He's like super, super smart marketer. And um, like, you know, some people make the false assumption assumption that just because you're a great marketer that you can you know market your own products and services like we all need help right it's the experts curse and can't read the label from inside the inside the bottle um i need help i hire marketing consultants all the time uh and uh so anyway i was working with russell and he was in uh, one of my programs 
uh, for about a year and he was struggling. He was, he was launching uh, 60 or 70 different power offer iterations. And he's like, it's not hitting, it's not hitting, but he never like never quit. And he never complained. Like, and I knew he was going to have success because there are people out there that, you know, they hit adversity once, twice, three times, five times, 10 times. Like they're going to, they're going to quit and they're going to, you know, they're just going to say, oh, this stuff doesn't work. But Russell was like, no, I know this works. I've seen it ha happen. And, you know, I just, I get it. Like, I, I'm just not hitting it. Right. And so he's going through and, and uh, I'm like, Russell, I really think you should try to like, let's pivot the offer to this avatar. I really think that that has a good probability of working. And so um, after about a year, he finally heeded that advice. And, you know, he's like, all right, let's try this. So new, almost this like new similar messaging but different avatar. Exactly. So he was trying to offer some form of marketing services to like fortune 500 companies or fortune 1000 companies, like targeting CEOs, targeting executives and targeting them with Facebook ads. Is it possible? Yeah. It's happened in the past. Like we've had success with it. Um, is it the largest market out there? No. And so the, that's what the data was telling him. And I, I, I voiced my concern early on. I said, listen, I think you can have success, but I think it's going to be, a slow burn. I said, if you can change your avatar and now like help other marketing professionals, like give them the skill sets that they need to go work with these Fortune 1000 companies or Fortune 500 companies, I think you've got a much bigger pie there. And I think you've got a really compelling offer. I asked him, I said, is that something that you can do and you would want to do? He said, absolutely. That would be within my wheelhouse. I'm like, all right, cool. So about a year later, he finally did it. And um, he went from like not being able to really close anyone and, and just getting a trickle of leads coming through to doing two to three sales a day. So like his lead flow exploded, you know, very similar messaging, just like making a two millimeter shift to a different avatar, same offer, same fulfillment. And uh, it was just night and day difference. Um, and so that's happened more times than I can count. I love it. So in the beginning, I mean, I love how you said that because it doesn't just have to be the messaging. People can tweak the messaging until they're blue in the face, but just shifting to a different uh, end user, it could just make all the difference in the world. No, so now he's putting that out and there's a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, you know, probably talking on the phone with people, selling. When someone gets something like that working, what do you recommend next for them? Yeah, if they get the lead flow coming in and they've got an offer that's converting, so they're closing at 20 to 30% of their phone calls, the very next step that they want to do is, you know, is okay, number like at that point, you have to make a, a decision. What kind of business do you want to run? Okay. Do you want to keep this as like a low key lifestyle business where you're bringing in 30 to 50K per month? That's you, an assistant, um, and I don't know, maybe a part time, you know, staff member, which, you know, you can, you can totally do. Or do you want to take it to the next level where you grow this to a larger, you know, uh, a, a larger business, start bringing on some, some additional team members, delegate your sales calls and, and, uh, and build an operation around that. I mean, it, that's essentially where we've, where we've seen the choke point hit is like, you get to 30 K per month, 50 K per month, you're doing everything on your own. You have to make that decision now. Um, where do you want to go from here? Do you want to delegate your sales calls? Okay, you got to go find a salesperson, right? Uh, do you want to bring on additional team members to support your fulfillment? It all depends, like that, you have to make the decision pretty much right there. Otherwise, you know, you're not, you're going to be limited on your growth and you're going to get burned out. And so um, that's, we, the, that's the point. If we zoom out for a second, Joel, yeah. like for the Russell uh, example, what does the funnel look like? Is he... Does he have a webinar that he's driving traffic to that's generating calls and then sales? Or what does the front end of that look like for, for him or in general? Yeah. So for him, uh, it's the power offer ad. So it's an ad that attracts sales qualified leads. And uh, so it's, you know, right up front, it's saying, do you want my help with this? Do you want to work together? Yes or no. And uh, if they click through, then they hit a landing page and the land landing page is all sales qualified lead messaging, which is very similar to like, hey, um, you know, we're looking for clients to get this result. If you're interested, click here to apply or click here to learn more, right? And so it's very much 
hey, this is a, this is a sales funnel, okay? This is not, sign, you know, register here to get a free PDF or free training or not. It's apply now. And so then, you know, they opt in there. Uh, they start the application. They watch a mini webinar. It's like, here's a little bit more. Uh, here's some information on how we plan to fulfill on the promise. Because your power offer is just your promise. That's all it is. And so, like, once you make that promise, that's your what. The next stage, if people make it past the what stage and they're interested, they want to know how do you pl- how do you fulfill on that promise? And that's what the mini webinar is all about. How do you fulfill on that promise? So they watch the mini webinar, fill out an application, and then they book a call. And that's it. I mean, so it's really um, you know, a three-step funnel, three or four step funnel. I mean, with tech now, I mean, you can we've been able to kind of like minimize the number of pages. And so it's that's irrelevant. But like you just want to make sure that you're making the offer up front getting them to fill an application and book a phone call. That's it. I've heard people in varying opinions on at what point do you give them the option to book a call? Um, you know, I'm wondering your take, you've probably seen, and probably it varies depending on the offer and the landing page, but I've seen it where, you know, a contact page and then they follow up with that because it's a bigger commitment to obviously choose a time, just have them fill out a form or do you have them choose a time? I love your thoughts on, at what point do you actually introduce um, here, book a time? Yeah, we will always have them fill out an application first before they book a call. Um, there are some instances where we remove the call booking step. Um, and, and this is the part where it now becomes more of an art than a science because it varies with every single offer. We talked about what makes a sales qualified lead a sales qualified lead earlier on, and that's urgency. You take it a step further, there's different levels of urgency as well. Like, so people can be urgent, but then people can be like really urgent. (laughs) Like, I don't have a better way of really explaining it other than that. But the more urgent the, the problem is or the solution is that you're offering, usually the higher the show up rate on your calls. And so we'll always start out by getting them to book a call first. Then we look at, okay, what's the no show rate? What's the lead quality. And that's where the artistic form comes in because there's all sorts of different optimization triggers and levers that you can pull. But, um, you know, we'll always start by getting them to fill out an application and then book a call. And then optimization comes in. It's like, okay, cool. Do we remove the call booking step? If the, you know, if the no show rate is really high, do we remove the call booking step and, you know, input another, you know, qualification step in the meantime, there's a lot of things that we can do, but, um, we'll start by having them, you know, fill out an application and book yeah. a call. You know, you mentioned Bob Bly's book and there was a page that really resonated. You immediately changed something you're doing. So I wanted for your high ticket courses book, I don't know if you could just hold it up for a second, uh, if you have it handy um, and people can get it on Amazon. Uh, I don't know, yes. can they get it on your website too or is, should they just go to Amazon? Yep, go to Amazon. That's the best place to get it. Uh, and if you want, especially if you want a physical copy of the book, we. Every so often we give away the, the ebook copy on my website, but like, you know, in terms of an evergreen standpoint, it get, you can get it physically printed and shipped to you from, uh, from Amazon. Yeah. The reason I ask about it is because like, what do people report to you being that light bulb when they check out your book, like you did with that Bob Live page three or whatever it was, what do people, what's the light bulb moment or moments from your book that people report? That's part of it. So that one, um, that one story about Bob is like a three-part sequence that I tell inside of the book where it is the light bulb moment for me that I need to make the offer first, sales first, then marketing. And because everything leading up to that, and what a lot of people think is they think the Ascension model. They think give away something for free, build the list, give value. Eventually, somebody's going to buy. And um, that's it's true. Yes, that is true, but it is a... That's a numbers game. And like, it's a, it's a law of large numbers. And so I flipped it on its head. I said, no, I want to go the descension route because, you know, I also give this, you know, Chet Holmes wrote a book called um, um, The Ultimate Sales Machine. I referenced that in the book as well. He talks about the buyer's pyramid. And, you know, the short answer of this is that you've got 10% of your market that's ready to buy right now. Everybody listening right now, if you're listening right now, you have 10% of your market that's ready to buy right now. They will buy or they will, they will consider buying if you can make a compelling enough offer. And so that combined with Bob's book, the light bulb moment went off for me saying, 
screw it. Like, okay, yeah, I know that's the smallest segment of my audience, but there's probably plenty of people to go fish there, right? And, and so that like to put the where the rubber met the road was when I was running my long form webinar, the problem that I ran into was that I was over-educating my market, meaning I, I mean, is that expected from an engineer? Yes. I mean, yes. that's that kind is of your, that's kind of your nature, right? It is. It is. And um, you know, I underestimated how large my ready to buy market size was. And I started to think about it. I'm like, well, how many people have, you know, my if my ideal avatar is somebody who's probably already bought a webinar software, they've already tried to write a webinar themselves, they um, you know, have probably tried and failed. Like even just looking at the software user base, like those are my potential customers, like the people who are ready to buy right now. And I was completely going after the unaware market. I was trying to educate them on why webinars were the greatest thing since sliced bread, why you need a webinar and, you know, trying to sell why webinars, why webinars, why webinars, when I could have just gone after the webinar audience that have, they already know they want a webinar but they are just trying and they've tried to create one themselves and they failed. And so I overlooked that. And when I shifted that, I said, Nope, screw it. I'm just going after them and I'm going to make them an offer. It, it was, it was a game changer for me. It really was. Yeah. I love how you talk about the, you know, the descension model. Cause a lot of people do talk about the ascension model. And I, you know, I encourage anyone to check out your, your site and consume some of the information because you do talk about this on there too. I love to talk about a few examples, Joel, um, you know, a few examples, well, one people can maybe, uh, if they're start more in the startup stage, they can relate to, and then one, if they just want to pour fuel on the fire, they can relate to. So one of my favorite latest books is the one that, uh, Alex Ramosi uh, wrote, which I think it was a hundred million dollar offers. Uh, it was called and, uh, talk about, uh, Alex and, and some of the things that you worked on together. Yeah. It, Alex, super smart guy, young kid, um, you know, kind of, you know, the diamond in the, in the rough, right. You know, he's just, um, a really, really inspiring story. So, uh, Alex and I got introduced to each other back in 2015, 2016, we were part of a mastermind together. And, um, I was working, uh, I was, I was in that mastermind. I was known as the webinar guy. So, you know, handful of, of members in the, uh, in the group would come to me like, Hey, I heard you the webinar guy. Let's, let's do some work together. Alex was one of those guys. And this was prior to him launching his hundred million dollar business, right? His hundred million dollar offer, you know, venture, uh, or what led him onto the, onto the rocket ship. Right. So he came to me and at the time, um, Alex was like flying all over the country and he was helping people. Um, he was, uh, he was helping people launch their gyms, like really like fill up their gyms. Like he was extremely skilled at it. Right. He's, he's a rock star salesperson. And he had the marketing background as well, but he came to me and he's like, Hey, I've, I really want to launch this, this online program, this group coaching program. And, um, you know, I heard, I, you know, I was, I've been advised to do a webinar to sell it heard you the webinar guy. So we started working together. And at that time I was, I had tested out the first version of the mini webinar and it was doing very well for myself. And I said, Alex, I think we should really try this because your like gym owners, they have, they're extremely time poor. They have no time in the world to sit down and watch a, an hour long webinar. Right. He's like, all right, let's do it. So we created a power offer. We created a uh, mini webinar and within the first I think it was like six months. And I mean, the testimonials in my book, but um, within the first six months, we went from zero to $400,000 per month. I mean, he was booking calls for like $5 a piece, $10 a piece, $12 a piece. And Alex is an extremely skilled salesperson. He was closing like 70 or 80% of them at, you know, he it, like, this is like early stage startup of, of this program. Like this was, this was like the start of hundred million dollar offers, right. was when we were working together. And so, you know, so he, he was, I remember we were going back and forth. We were texting back and forth. Cause like I would get applications and uh, you know, I was scaling up my applications and he was getting, I was like, man, I got another one. I got another one. Just got another one. Just got another one. And so we had this little competition going and uh, I'll never, I'll never forget it. But um yeah. So within six months, he was doing 400 grand a month with that, uh, with that program. And, and obviously he's gone on to do some, some really incredible things. And so, um, but that was, you know, uh, you know, it, it was, I was honored to have a, a, a part in, in that launch. And that was all because we, 
we made offers, you know, and um, even before we did that, we did try a long form webinar at first. We spent, I don't know, three or 400 bucks and it, we could tell it was just going to be a dud. And that's what I told him. I said, I think we really need to, I think we need to shift this. Let's flip it on its head and let's try this, this direct approach. And we just, night and day is not even the proper con- contrast to give uh, give the two, te- the two tests. I love but, it. And yeah. then you worked, um, talk about Boyd. Yeah, so Boyd, uh, I have, a, I have a, a, a few clients that are like the, the shining case study of like what you do when, you know, going from the ascension model to the descension model and how much of a shift that can make. So Boyd is a um, uh, information tech, he works in the information technology space. So he helps um, uh, employees in the IT space, level up their career and get them a, like a six figure job in cybersecurity. It's a very niche field um, and he can get them, you know, six and multi six figure careers. So for the first eight months, he'd been trying to sell this program. He was following the Ascension model, giving away a free report, trying to sell them on like a $7 membership or a $300 course or a $500 course. And I think I remember him telling me at one point, um, over the first like six or eight months, I think he only made like 800 bucks or like a thousand dollars. So then he found some of my content and he, he saw the descension path in which I, I talk about. And then he learned about power offers. Like, man, this just makes a whole lot of sense. So we worked with our agency. We wrote his offers for him. We said, okay, this is, this is where I want you to go. And I want you to change the price of your program from $500 to $3,000 minimum. I said, you're helping people land six and multi six figure careers. There's value here. And a lot of people in the education space, the course space, like that's a big jump for them. Like sometimes they go from like $50 programs. I tell them like, you got to go to $3,000. And it's like, they a get really, really shift. nervous. And they get really nervous. So anyway, he's like, okay, I'll do what you say. The first month it, that he did launched. Did it take any coaxing, Joel? Um, as far as like, hey, you should I go mean, there from was, this $100 to 3000 Was there anything you said to help him shift the mindset? Or he's like, I trust you at that point. If, if somebody's in the low ticket mindset, like 100 bucks or even $500, you just have to walk them through the economics, like the unit economics of how difficult it is to make that work, right? Because they will, they probably already bought into the fact they need to run paid ads. I'm like, so if you're selling a hundred dollar course, like you need to be acquiring customers for under a hundred dollars, or you need to, you know, do back end offers and upsells and blah blah blah. And once I explain that you need to be great at copywriting, offer writing, funnel building, uh, media buying, uh, email marketing, like it's essentially, I broke it down at one point. It's like eight or ten specialty specialties that you need to be a master at to make the low ticket stuff work like right out of the gate. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it's, it's a very compelling argument and it's just the truth. I mean, I spent $250,000 of my own money trying to do like, once I finally got to the stage of writing a book, which took me seven years, by the way, like I didn't start out writing a book. Um, I spent 250 grand and it still wasn't as profitable as like the other models that I teach. And so, um, with Boyd though, Boyd was very open to it. He was very receptive. He's like, okay, I get it. Um, I'll start at $3,000. I'm comfortable doing that. Um, but that first month, I mean, it, he went from zero to $40,000 in month one. Now, I, might be, I might be off a little bit with the numbers, but it, it was substantial. Now, mind you, he had only made about $1,000 in the first eight months. And when he flipped it on its head, going to you know, $40,000, it might've been within like the first 30 days of launching. It was, it was a game changer. And Boyd is also very systematic and he's very, um, he's an intelligent guy, like really, really proud of what he's done. Cause that went from $40,000 in the first 30 days. Then he, in, in about a year, he scaled that to $250,000 per month. Then he went from $250,000 per month to a million dollars a month in like eight months time frame between those two milestones. He's crushing it right now. He just, it's, it's a really, really inspirational story. Obviously, to get to those levels, a hundred million dollars in 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 revenue, a million dollars a month in revenue, it takes more than just a compelling offer. But you can't get there without a compelling offer, right? It's like that's that's number one. That's rule number one. You know, Joel. Um, some people may hear like this seems like way out of my reach, way out of my realm. Um, what about talk about Susan? 
as far as, you know, maybe a little more relatable as far as, you know, going from someone thinking of going from zero to a million dollars a month or something like that? Yeah. Susan's a great story. And Susan, Susan is actually more relatable to me because have I ever done a million dollars in a month? No, my business has never done a million dollars in a month. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I choose to live a lifestyle of business. I've had the opportunity to build a big team and to really take it to the next level and go, you know, you know, chase that eight figure, multi eight figure business, uh, tried it at one point and, you know, the lifestyle that was, that was, that I saw in, in my path to go get that. It's just was nothing that I wanted. Um, so I, I live, which the I want you to, after you, yeah, after you talk about Susan, I'd love for you to talk about the concept of the semi-retired life. Yeah. So Susan came to me uh, and uh, she'd been following my stuff for a while. She purchased one of my webinar programs back in the day and uh, she was in the process of reinventing herself. So she was a seasoned, you know, entrepreneur, business veteran, had launched multiple offers in the past, but she had kind of shut down her previous life, her previous businesses and was ready to reinvent herself in this new realm. So she, uh, she reached out to me and she said, Hey, I've been following your stuff. I really like what you're doing. I get this idea, the power offer and, and the mini webinar. And so she signed up and she's like, I really just want to run, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a one woman band, right? I just, uh, um, I, I just want to keep it low key. Just, you know, just me doing my thing and get a steady stream of clients coming in. So she followed, you know, followed the methodology. And uh, within the first couple of months, she was doing, you know, $30,000 a month. And she sent me this, this, um, this message one day. She's like, hey, you know, I just wanted to say a huge thanks to you guys. This is a big game changer for me. My, you know, I never told you this in the past, but like I was going through some rough stages in my life when I wanted to reinvent myself. And now here I am sitting by the pool or what did she say? Um, it's, it's in the book, but um, she, I think she said she was coaching her clients in her underwear or something like it was just really funny. Like she's relaxing, you know, living in California, like, you know, coaching her clients in her, in her, in her underwear. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> you know, whatever floats your boat is <laughs> it's, it's up to you. But, um, you know, it's, that's the beauty of one of, you know, running these types of businesses, particularly in the education space. I work, you know, I help anyone who sells with appointments, the vast majority of my audience is, you know, um, coaching programs, you know, high ticket offers, uh, you know, high ticket courses, you name it. Um, but you know, you get to do that when, you know, if you're in this, in this niche, it's, it's, it's a wild niche, you know, it really is. It's a, uh, it's a great niche to be a part of. Nobody really knows it exists. I mean, I mean, I walk around town, I ran this event for military veterans, um, last week for the 4th of July. And uh, so I bought out a, co a coffee house for anyone who served um, active or former or retired. And I bought a, out a co coffee house for four days over the 4th of July weekend. So if you served, you could go in there and get anything you wanted. Right. And so it made the front page of the, of the paper. We got media coverage it was really, really cool. And a lot of people came up like, well, so what do you do? And I'm like, I just have to tell them I run a marketing agency because anytime I go further down the rabbit hole, they're like, what's a high ticket course? What's a webinar? Like, like, don't worry about it. Like it's, it's this niche that nobody really understands. And, um, but it's great. I, well, I, lo I love our, I love the world we live in. Joel, there's so much more we go into, but I want to encourage everyone, check out your podcast, go to webinaragency.com, check out joelerway.com, um, check out high ticket courses, uh, the book on Amazon and Joel, I want to be the first one to, you know, thank you so much. All right. Thanks for your time, man. It's been a blast. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.